Hello, Star Citizens, and welcome back to another video. We're just going to hop straight into this one. I've had all the pre-talk the the pre -talk stuff happen, so we're just going straight over. And we're going to talk about the Aegis Hammerhead. So, yes, we're going in alphabetical order with these ships, um, trying to get through all of Aegis right now, the same way that I did my ship reviews. And this one is one that, if you would have asked me a few months ago, it probably would have been rated much lower than I would rate it now. But I'm not going to tell you what my new rating is because I'm going to make another review on it um, in the future when it gets its its other stuff. But right now, it's got some of some it it the hammerhead is hammerheading right now. It's doing what it's supposed to do, which is what I I thought it was lacking before. So the hammerhead is the anti-fighter ship right it's it's supposed to destroy anything from a medium fighter down medium fighters snubs uh medium fighters snubs and small fighters right uh heavy fighters might be able to put some dents in it but it can destroy those too uh if if you get them in your sights the right way you know um but it's mostly for those other ships right um it has a crap ton of guns on it it doesn't have weapons which i think i think is i think is part of the problem unless they allow you to ram with this thing and make that front area of it much tougher now one thing that they did do is that front area where the hammerhead part is the the crew is not sitting right there so you could technically ram things with this however um, and I don't know if maybe this ship is older than when I got in the game. I believe I think this game this this ship came in back in 2014 or something 2014 or 2015. I didn't reach the game until 2016. So Yeah, it's and it was the end of 2016 too. So I barely even count 2016 But yeah, I, I don't I don't know if it's meant to ram but I hope in the future it can but that's this is that's not what this is for this this video is use case, so what would I use the hammerhead for? Well, I would use it to destroy fighters. It is a ship that I would take along with a with a very important ship, but it is not the only ship I would take. So this is really good working in tandem with a ship that's more aimed at taking down uh, heavy fighters and large ships because the hammerhead's not gonna do a great job at taking down the larger ships. Um, it doesn't have torpedoes, it has missiles, and I think it has a bunch of size threes. So it's not going to take down, you know, uh, like gigantic ships. It's really only geared at fighters. Um, it, uh, I could even include heavy fighters because of the missiles and say that it can take down heavy fighters. So I, I'm not, I, th those don't pose as much of a threat. But if you get enough heavy fighters, you can, uh, they, they can do some damage on this thing. Um, so that's why I say, you know, I, I, I hesitate to put the, the heavy fighters in the conversation. But this is really for those medium fighters on down. I would use it um, as a ship that goes along with another ship as a defensive mechanism because it has crazy amounts of, of HP. I think it has the most HP in a hangar ready ship in the entire game. So, um, you know, almost 300,000 HP. And that, that's huge, right? I wish it carried a little bit more cargo. I wish it had like, you know, um, it could deploy uh, another ship. Um, I wish it had like a little hangar on it or something. Um, but, you know, 40 SEU is respectable. Um, I just wish it had weapons too. Like I wish it had some weapons on the front of it. Um, I think that would help alleviate some of the ability of other ships to like kind of swing into this space and what do i mean by that so the constant the connie andromeda has some crazy like some crazy amount of missiles um it's got almost the same amount of missile capacity as this thing except it has like size twos and size ones or size threes and size ones or something like that um and the redeemer um i also wonder about bringing two redeemers sometimes right like would i just wa rather bring two two redeemers um or would i bring one of these now the redeemer is not going to have as much as many missiles but the redeemer is going to have those dual size five turrets right 
So um, you're going to be able to do more damage um, in the hammerhead, but the Redeemer has pilot control weapons. So at least you got the two size fours that are pilot controlled, meaning your pilot can do some damage. So that's one less crew that you need aboard the ship, right? So I think you need what, like five people to crew the um, to crew the Redeemer. I think the pilot can control the two size fours and the missiles. Um, if I'm not correct, somebody correct me in the comments. But I'm pretty sure um, you can correct. You can um, you can you can control both of those as the pilot. Um, and then you need other people to control the, tur the turrets. It's not a ship that I would try to fly solo in. And none of these ships are. Right? Well, you could probably pull off the Constellation solo. Because um, it has all the size fives are pilot controlled, which is absolutely insane. Um, and you, the, the turrets are so small. They're dual size twos. But I just... I don't know that they they add some damage, but they don't add enough damage to where I would want to waste a whole person on them. I, I really feel like those should be size threes, but because you get the four size fives, it's hard to ask for more, especially when you get what, like 40 missiles or something. It's some crazy amount of missiles that you get in this thing. Not to mention it's one of the toughest ships in the game. So why do those kind of, you know, challenge the hammerhead they don't they're not as good as the hammerhead i want to be very clear they're not as good as the hammerhead the hammerhead has uh all of this you know redundancy like all of its weapons have redundancy there's multiple weapon or like uh not weapons but the turrets have multiple redundancies you can shoot off two of the guns and it'll still have two um you know uh, you you can shoot out shoot at and blow up one of the missile racks it still has other missile racks You can blow up one of the shields. It has another shield You can blow up one of the power plants it has another power plant another cooler like it's got redundancy out the wazoo So it's a very it's built to take a crap ton of damage and then when you get through the armor and You actually start taking out parts. It's meant to lose parts and still keep going so it's not so the, the constellation Andromeda, well, you could say the whole Constellation series, but I say the Andromeda because I, I think that has the most weapons in it, if I'm not mistaken. And then the Redeemer. Those are just super cheap. Like, you can buy two Redeemers. Two Redeemers would be, I think it's $660. So you still have $100 to spare if you get two Redeemers. Two Constellations. I think you can buy three Constellations for the, for the price of a Hammerhead. So... It's not that the hammerhead, it's, I, I just think the hammerhead's a little overpriced. Um, I think it's 725 bucks or 750. It's either 725 or, or 750. I think it's 725. Um, and it's, it's just a little overpriced, I think, but they have made it better and it still hasn't had its major gold pass yet. So I think it might get a little better. Um, I think two of those turrets, should be size fives i think they should be quad size fives um not i think there should be one on each side i think it should be the two forward the, like uh what do you call the front of the ship the front the front the the most the forward most <laughs> turrets should be the size fives and then the rest should be size fours the quad size fours um if you don't want to do that I think you should put two size four weapons on the front and you put two size four weapons on the front and give this thing, you know, some uh, ballistics that are shooting out of the front of this thing. Um, I think that makes this ship. I think that gives this ship the, that last little oomph it needs to not be. Why should we take this instead of two of those other ones that I mentioned? Right. Uh, and, you know, again, this ship is still better than two of those other ones. It's still better, even if you bring two of those other ones. This ship can still compete um, with those. It's just, it struggles. It struggles. Um, because if I bring two Andromedas, I have way more missiles than I would have in a Hammerhead. So I could just, it could just be a massive missile barrage between those two Andromedas that are attacking whatever they're attacking to the point where you're going to use up all of your chafe, all of your, all of your countermeasures are going to be used up, right? So that's, that's my thing with that. And if I bring the redeemers, I'm going to be, be able to do a lot more with my turrets. My turrets are going to be putting down way more DPS 
than the hammerheads turrets if I have two, two of those. Not to mention, I have weapons. Now those aren't gonna be doing that much damage, so I, I don't really count too much of those, but the turret damage I can do in two redeemers is higher than the, the turret damage that I can do in a hammerhead. Not to mention the, the redeemer has size, it has the same shields, I think, as the hammerhead. I'm pretty sure it has the same shields or like the same capacity, yeah, it has the same shields. So, I, I guess the question, the question for me is why do I bring the, the Redeemer? Well, I bring the Redeemer because it's the better ship in general. It's the better ship because of what it's meant to do. It's not the better ship technically, like as far as value, it's the better ship as far as what it's meant to do. If I, if, do I want two redeemers with me? Do I want two Connies with me? Or do I want a hammerhead with me? The hammerhead is going to be seen as the bigger threat. It's gonna have three times as much HP as those other two ships, maybe two times as much as the Connie. Um, it's going to, it's gonna have like, the, it has a little bit of each of those ships but it has it in one package. Not to mention the crew count for the Redeemer goes up to 10 if you bring two Redeemers. Um, the crew count for the Connie is, the, is the, the lowest, but it's also a ship that, you know, I think the, the, the weapons have to be on point and it's, it's a slow moving ship. So getting those weapons on point is not gonna be as easy as like, a hammerhead can just roll and yaw a little bit to to get its weapons on point and it has weapons on both sides whereas the constellation has to get the front onto the target so i think the hammerhead is the better overall ship to take with you when you need a defensive force and that's really what i would use it for i wouldn't use this for cargo it has 40 seu of cargo i wouldn't use it for anything except defense um, military operations, things like that. Um, this, if, if I, I don't know if this thing, um, is any good, gonna be any good when it's all said and done in, uh, atmosphere. My guess is it would not. Um, but if it was, this would also make a really good, uh, ground combat ship because those weapons can put down a lot of, um, firepower onto the ground but it doesn't have VTOL, so my guess is it won't be really great in atmosphere. Um, but it's really expensive, both in-game and out-of-game. I think it's like 48 million inside the game. So you really have to know, like need the hammerhead. And right now, I don't know a lot of people that need a hammerhead. Um, if you're going to do, um, you know, uh, Idris missions or something like that, um, the Arlington or, or Zeno threat, then I could see it. Or uh, if you're doing hammerhead battles, hammerhead against hammerhead, I could see that. Um, but then it's really just tactics and loadout right at that point. Um, so I could, there's use cases for them, like just having fun in the game. But I think they're really best for, hey, there's a whole C carrying a full load and we need something that can take down fighters that's where you bring the hammerhead, but it shouldn't only be the hammerhead. You need another ship. This, I think, pairs perfectly with the Polaris. I think if you have a hammerhead and a Polaris, you are doing damage. Um, you are doing massive damage to anything that comes in your realm, so people should just stay the heck away from you. Um, I think it also pairs well with an Idris, um, but that being said, if you've played the Idris missions and you've seen the Hammerhead and Idris combat, you could you can take them on fairly easily. So I think the Polaris is better because the Polaris, I think the Idris is is kind of re more reliant on those uh, those torpedoes or the uh, uh, the the railgun. Um, where I think the I think when we talk about the uh, the Polaris, we're not as reliant on the guns the, the rail gun we can go we can use our torpedoes right so that so the, so the the idris has the the size five torpedoes that's 10 of them right but 
and this is the M we're talking about, right? But the thing is that rail gun, that, that mass driver, that's the thing that's doing the damage. That's the thing that if it, if it hits you, it's putting in major work. Like this thing is going to, it's probably going to one shot you. If, if, if it hits you, it's probably going to one shot you. Um, but the thing is you have to hit and I think it charges first. So it's really only meant for the largest of ships. Most other ships I think are going to be able to, to, um, you know, escape from it. Um, the only thing I would say is that the Idris also, um, is super tough, right? It's got like 22 million HP. I don't think the, um, the Polaris is going to have that much. I think the Polaris probably end up with like 10 million or something, um, somewhere between eight and 12 million, I think. Um, so the hammerhead is really, it's not. I, I think the Hammerhead's HP is too low now, and I think the Polaris is gonna, I mean, I don't know. I don't know for a fact that these things, I'm just kind of guessing. Um, but I, I'm guessing that because the Hammerhead is like a capital ship, whereas the Hammerhead is considered a subcap, it's a Corvette, um, I think the Polaris is gonna just outclass the Hammerhead. But I think the Polaris is going to work well with the hammerhead in a much better capacity because you can destroy those larger ships with those um those torpedoes because i think it has size 10 torpedoes so um yeah if if you're going idris versus like let's say you have or not idris um if you have a hull c yeah a hammerhead and a uh, polaris um, you're going to be able to take anything that comes at you um, whereas if you have an Idris and a hammerhead and then you run up on a Polaris, both your hammerhead and your Idris might get wrecked because of those size 10 torpedoes. Um, unless you get a lucky shot with that rail gun and the hammerhead is just really not going to do much to the Polaris anyway. Um, but the Idris can do some things. It has the size fives. If it gets some good hits with the size fives um, and you know it can do some damage with the, i think it has the size sevens it has it has a bunch of guns on it so i mean you could do some damage i'm not saying you can't do any damage with it um to, to with the with the uh with the idris to the polaris i'm just saying it's going to be a little harder it's got a lot of size five guns and it has those size sevens which are the m9s but I think the Polaris is going to it's going to be able to put in some work on you. And and I think people are going to be surprised at how often a Polaris um, beats a a Idris. I think people are going to be heavily surprised. They're going to be like, wait, I have an Idris. How did you beat me? That doesn't make any sense that you beat me. <laughs> so, yeah. And and. If, if, you know, 14 size, size, or uh, I think it's size 10s. It's either size 10s or size 9s. Um, if you have like 14 size 9 torpedoes, you can just keep firing them. Boom, 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 boom. And you're, at some point, they're going to run out of flare and chaff. And maybe, maybe if you're shooting at an Idris, maybe that doesn't run out. But don't forget, this thing has the size 3s too. It can take out, the, the Polaris has the size 3s, so it can take out smaller ships too so again this is not a polaris video I'm, I'm sorry i get excited when i talk about the polaris but the polaris has to be mentioned because it works so well with the hammerhead but the hammerhead um has to work with an, another ship to be viable for my use case um it's not a ship i would just take out by itself um it has to be serving a purpose connected to another ship um, for it to be viable but if it is doing that, it is the best at what it does, which is taking out a crap ton of fighters. Um, so there you have it. Uh, that's my use case for the hammerhead. Um, oh, wait, I forgot to give you my loadout. Hold on. I have I've, I got to give you my loadout because I, I don't want to, you know, end the video without giving you my loadout. Um, what did I put on this? So I, I don't think you should be trying to hide your hammerhead so we're not going with anything stealth or civilian or anything like that this is a military ship so let's treat it like a military ship and put all 
military class A parts on this thing. We're talking the FR-86s, the JS-500, and the Blizzard. Now, the only thing I'll say about the, the, the class A military part is that there's two of them. There's the Quadracell MX and the JS-500. So actually, you know, you could pick either one right now, but the JS-500 has been updated to now have a lower power request time than the Quadracell uh, MX. Um, so I used to say the Quadracell MX was better overall, but now I would say that the, uh, the JS-500 is better. So if you watched any of my previous videos and I said that, that has changed now and that is better now. Um, and then for the Quantum Drive, again, uh, it depends on your role. The Quantum Drive is a little different um, because obviously your max distance is going to change. So if you're going for long-term combat, as in you have a long way to go to get to the contact um, or you're patrolling, I would not use a military part because you're going to have way less distance. You're going to have like a third of the distance. But if you're going directly to a fight and then you're going to be done, I would use a military A part. So if I'm if I'm if I'm going long distances or patrolling, I'm going to put the Erebos in there. That's the civilian grade A um, or I'm going to put the uh, industrial part in there. Um, but again, this depends on what you're what you're doing. But, you know, I would put the Erebos in because it's a good mixture of you know speed and distance um whereas the the industrial part is it's it's great on distance but it's going to be super slow and you do not want to be super slow in quantum so i, I would prefer the Erebos um if you're going to be patrolling and then if you're just going in for the fight i would get the ts2 which is the the military grade a part um distance is going to suck but you're going to get there super fast and so yeah that's my loadout uh what I, uh, I that's my loadout for the for the parts the components um would i change the the turrets yes i would put it i mean depending on what you're trying to do obviously um i think i would just put all adb4s on this thing because the one of the things you want to do with this is you cannot let light and medium fighters hang around and, sh and pop off missile shots and stuff at you. You have 300,000 HP, which is great, but that's not so much that you can't be destroyed. Um, and I think everybody knows this now from doing VHRTs and and, um, and, and ERTs now. I think everybody has, is aware now that if you run into those, if you're doing those, that you can take down a hammerhead if you get enough right shots, right? So you cannot let people hang around by trying to reduce their shields, right? So I think I'm going all ballistic Gatlings. If I run out of ammo, I run out of ammo. Um, I'll jump or whatever, but I'm going all ADB4s on this um, on this thing. I'm getting rid of the cross-section missiles because I don't like cross-section missiles. If you've been watching the channel, you might start to notice this now. Um, I don't like cross-section missiles. I would either go with infrared. I prefer electromagnetic because, you know, to me it is what it is, but um, I, I like those a little better, but the uh, infrareds will work too. I would get rid of all the cross sections, which are, which are the arresters, and then I would get all electromagnetic. Leave the infrareds that are already there and replace the cross sections with the electromagnetic um, joints, which I believe are the thunderbolts. So yeah, that's what I would do. I, I think that's my full loadout. I think I gave, I gave everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it for the hammerhead. That's my use case, my value, and my loadout. So I will see you in the next one. Peace.